10 o'clock, we'll call the Sawyer County Administration Committee meeting to order, please. Madam Clerk, may we have a roll call? Lee Tuman? Here. Ron Buckles is excused. Dale Schrader? Here. Tom Duffy? Here. Ron Kinsey? Here. Do you have a quorum? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Yes, we have a quorum. Please rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Certification of compliance with open meetings law, please. This meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by section 19.84 of the Wisconsin statutes. Thank you. Meeting agenda has been presented. If no comments, I'll go on to number six public comment. I've got one paper turned in. Ms. Zelmer, please step up to the microphone. They should need an address. Linda Zilmer, 902 Holly Hill in Birchwood, Edgewater property owner. And um, my comment is with regard to public records and record retention. And I've had a few experiences with that. And uh, one example was, I think it was Northern States Power that originally owned the Birch Lake Dam and uh, now under XL. And they gave it jointly to Washburn County and Sawyer County to own and to maintain. And over the years, there was a lot of um, problems with Sawyer County paying their share. Nobody knew where the original documents were. I contacted, contacted Excel because Sawyer County couldn't find their documents and Washburn County couldn't find theirs. So I provided them. And so Birch Lake Dam is coming up for an inspection. Again, whether or not there will be costs, I don't know. Um, that's just one example of something that you would think is an important document that would be kept uh, for access. It's ongoing and it's a major uh, infrastructure. Uh, I am concerned that with modernizing records that paper documents are being destroyed. I know with um, when the county switched over to Civics Plus, I don't know if it was a training issue or what it, whatever it was, when the PDF files were being uploaded to where we can access them on the website. They weren't being do, uh, done so that you could actually scan that. So they weren't searchable. Also, with the minutes and agendas from prior to switching to Civics Plus, there are lost documents. There are big gaps in years, depending on committees or county board. So, I, and then just even looking at the Muni code update, where at some point the zoning department lost track of zoning amendments. So I'm really concerned about the process of destroying paper records when, with these past upgrades, we haven't really been cert certain about how we can retrieve them or search them for future use. Can that be an agenda item, um, or can I get clarification outside this meeting? Um, because once those paper documents are destroyed, if you can't retrieve them electronically, um, I have a concern. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Selmer. Anyone else for a public comment? Mike, anybody online? No. All right. Appreciate that. Okay, moving on then. Number seven, we have no meeting minutes to review. Correct, Madam Clerk? We did not have any meeting last month. Correct. Thank you. All right, moving on. Number eight, Veteran Service Department report. Great. Hi. Good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning. So uh, for February, uh, I had 550 phone calls, 309 letters, emails, faxes, and 181 office visits. Uh, for Veterans Service Office, uh, for submission of compensation and pension claims, I had uh, 26 pension claims to date and received retroactive payment. Our veteran has received retroactive payment of $37,771.60 for claims that were decided in their favor. It's been very busy, continues to be very busy. Um, what else to, to talk about other than that? I guess at some, at some point, I probably sh should sit down. I know I give you this, and I'm like, well, if that's, it really doesn't sum up what the service office does. And I can't get into specifics for a lot of things. Um, but at some point, I, I probably need to come back and talk to you maybe in bits and pieces. In the future, I don't know if you have the time in the committee meeting. To we'll take the time. Take a few subjects yep. to, to talk about. 
But um, I know you look at this and it's like, well, what did he really do? A lot of it is either HIPAA under HIPAA or Privacy Act information. And, and it's not, you know, I got to walk a thin line, if you will, yep. for, for what what this office provides our veterans. Sure. Gary, you can reach out to Lynn or I or Andy when you want extra time on the agenda. Okay. You bet. Okay. Mr. You, Duffy, do you have anything to do with the Haywood Pet Clinic? Uh, I work with them quite a bit as far as the Haywood VA Clinic. Are you arranged uh, meetings there? Or? Um, no, I work with I work with the providers and the staff quite a bit to get veterans uh, what they need, where they need to go. Uh, a lot of times, the veterans uh, can't communicate what you know, what they need. Um, to, to the provider, and it's not necessarily for immediate health care, it's, it's for generating another documents. Uh, for me, it's sometimes so I, I don't call them deaf, you want me to go. In some, in some cases, I have veterans come in, and I can see I've been doing this job long enough to see things. I'm not a doctor, but I can see the symptoms of diseases. And I've sent them into the doctor, and at times doctors have made, uh, made a clarification of what what the veteran is trying to tell them, and they reached out to me during that appointment, and I told them exactly. It's like, okay, I got it. I understand what you need, and uh, and taking care of them. As far as scheduling appointments, uh, yes, guiding appointments, yes, I help veterans with that with the staff. If the staff has problems, they've got people that walk in claiming to be veterans that are mentally ill. That are not veterans. Um, we've got veterans that are mentally ill that have problems, and I kind of help them with that versus somebody else in the county helping them. Um, that wears a badge. But um, anyway, um, yeah, so yeah. we work we work quite a bit together. I have, I have to, it's, you know, it's a good, um, it's one of a friend having, having um, people to, to leverage on. And then I've got a social worker that covers this whole area uh, in the VA. I worked out of Chippewa. I worked with them quite a bit. Um, I need to include the Minneapolis Medical Center uh, staff and doctors. So there's there's quite a quite a bit of uh, communication. Is there something specific? No, I think it's a big building. Do they have doctors there from the staff? It, they yeah, it is actually the smallest clinic. In Wisconsin, that falls under the Hayward or Minneapolis Union Medical Center as far as services go. It's a basic clinic. There's one provider, she's a registered nurse in there. She reports all her work is is, is looked after or, or there's oversight provided by a doctor, a licensed doctor, to make sure that she's she's you know going down the right path. She's been very good. Um, but since I've been doing this job, we went through she is number four. And because they burn them all, they expect yeah. there's each 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 provider is is expected to carry 750 veterans, and that's a lot. And then you get one hour per yeah. veteran in a day, an eight hour day. And, and from the start to finish with that with that uh, veteran, they're supposed to get the notes in um, if they need special care to get those uh, requests in to to uh, to move their health forward. So there is a lot. There is a lot for them to do on a daily basis. Um, so, and then after that, the rest of the support staff. There's mental health, uh, mental health uh, services that's provided through the clinic. Um, I call it Doc in the Box, but basically, you know, video, Same. video feed over a television, secured with the doctor in Minneapolis. And then from there, if there's expanded care that needs to be done and the veteran can't go, then get care in the community. This trumps. Uh, Veterans Choice, um, that is now uh, community care here in the community, um, where they can get veterans into the specialists in the local area. They try to go to not That's my aviation company. Uh, from from their address to be able to be seen. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. Anything else for Gary? Anyone? Appreciate the work you do. Amen. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, All right. Okay. Moving on. Number nine, Mike, information technology. Anything you want to tell us? 
I don't really have any updates, but uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Are we staying on our budget now for the new courthouse and your, as far as IT is concerned? Uh, well, the only thing that I'm, I have any insight into is the audio video stuff that that part is under in budget. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anything from Mike, guys, from IT? I was just going to add that, yeah, uh, there was some issues a couple months ago with the AV for the new courthouse, but Mike had that straightened out with our vendors and uh, have all the pieces. I'm just going to uh, add a couple of questions. A month from now for the April board meeting, we should be able to use the new boardroom. That'll have all the AV. Um, yeah. I heard somebody talking about that. Uh, I, well, if we'll it's try. ready, Mike, I mean, don't we'll try. Okay. I, um, okay. Yeah, so we'll see about how that's going to go. Um, I, the, I mean, honestly, the courtroom is the priority to get that. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Schedule for the Actually, I'm going to change my mind and say it's probably, probably a hard no. Okay. Because we were talking about that focus is the courtroom. Boardroom is secondary, and some of the equipment isn't in there. So, okay. but that leads me to think the existing courtroom aren't they going to be starting to tear that apart in April? Yes. So, where are we going to meet in April? I mean, we could meet here. <clears throat> I don't know. I just uh, probably here. Yeah, probably here. I, honestly, the focus has been so much on the courtroom flip over. I understand that. They need to really discuss the the boardroom uh, the board meeting. For the, um, so we'll figure that out. Yeah. All right. Just trying to think ahead. That's yeah, that's good, Ron. Anything, Mr. Duffy, Mr. Schleter for IT? No? All right. Thank you, Mike. All right, number 10, human resources report. Rose isn't here, but we have a written report provided. Correct? Andy, you? Yeah. Um, so uh, there's been a lot of activity, I mean, as far as ambulance bringing some additional staff on sheriff that we filled out some um, dispatch jail and and deputy positions have been added um filled um, we interviewed with the highway commissioner yesterday and we have a mental health therapist that we're scheduling an interview with an application um, then you can see all the positions we're recruiting for um, you can add in um, human services executive director into that list as well mm -hmm. so we have a lot of activity um going on and I've already updated the, the human services committee I'll let you know CPS is the priority right now we're down four caseworkers we're uh, bringing out some contracted help and also uh, other counties are filling in some gaps for us but that's uh, where the focus is right now all of us have been spending a lot of time just in that area in the last couple of weeks um I'm trying to give anything else to note with those positions Andy, with all this recruitment and interviews you're doing, do we have a competitive wage to attract these people here? Um, we're going to be finding that out. I mean, you know, see, like the CPS well, positions, we really haven't had a chance to find out. But those wages were adjusted about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, now when we get into the department with like the you know, commissioner offer. We'll go out today. Um, based on the wages, the wage skills we have, we're in the ballpark. Uh, what I told uh, the, another committee the other night, though, is what we're finding is even though our wages based on what other counties are paying are in the ballpark, sometimes we're finding when we go to make an offer to bring somebody in, it, is it enough to move somebody from another job to our jobs? And there's a lot of factors with that. And part is um, where are they coming from? How far are we bringing them in from? Are they going to be able to find some place to, are they going to be commuting? Or are they going to find housing here? That all impacts the wage. So I think our wages are in the ballpark. There are, I should say, there are some we need to adjust, but the ones we're working on currently, it looks like our scale is com comparable to other counties. But some other, sometimes it, you're finding when you, it's not enough to move them out of their current job. You know, we're going to pay them equivalent. That's what I'm saying. Yep. So that's, so we might be back here in a month talking about needing to adjust our scale to. To fill some of these positions well we certainly have an attractive area for them to move to right mr duffy yeah, and that's the, the women the, the women chairs any mm -hmm. luck with that at all yeah i think when you consider the total cost of this program not having them housed here mm -hmm. um, transportation back and forth it's gonna be huge uh, yeah 20 i saw the jail report and i think there's 20 some that are still in barron county yep we have uh, 17 i think or 17 yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been averaging right in the 20 is area 
Um, we've got, um, we have hired a female jailer, um, but we still have a couple out on maternity, so we don't have enough to bring them back in. Well, are there other counties having that same problem? Everybody's having With the same females problem. Females especially? Um, I don't know if I would say it's, I mean, jailers, period, are, are a problem. Yeah. I have not talked to any that have a specific problem with female jailers. Actually, the other counties, I should say, the other counties I have any knowledge of, they have a problem with jailers, but they've, it's been more males than females. Oh, and the females, do they, do they mention wages? Is that the problem? What is, why, why don't they want to come? Um, we just don't see a lot of applicants. The ones that have left, um, wages is always a part of the discussion, but they're not, lead, I would say the ones we've known that have left have not left for higher paying jobs. Maybe they've left for comparable jobs that are in a better environment than the jail. Yeah. I think it's the type of the nature of the job more than it is the wage. It would be interesting to know what the total cost per, per inmate yeah. is of women. What would it cost total? Yeah, yeah, I was going to pose that question too, Andy. Is this is this budget neutral to house them outside the county, or is it really hurting us? Um, it's hurting us a little bit. A little we're not, bit. We're not able to read our overall. But the way the jail is structured and the number of inmates we still have, it's not like we're cutting staff here to house them elsewhere. Yeah, but. Um, could you look into that for us? Well, I think just, Mr. Duffy is going down yeah, the right I can talk track to here. Done some, they've done some other things to reduce the transportation cost, as well as how they book the female inmates. So there isn't a lot of movement back and forth. So the the, the way the um, daily rate we're paying in Barron versus what we pay here, to, to staff it up is comparable, but it's definitely not, it's not busting our budget, but it's not costing us any less. <laughs> But I think if we don't do something, it's not going to get worse. It's going to get worse rather than better. And we did we did increase the jail wage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the last six months, when this started, we increased the wage, and that didn't yeah. move any additional applications. And I know you said in Health and Human Services that you did exit interviews on these CPS workers. Yeah. Did any of them complain about the wage? It was not the forefront of the conversation. Um, that definitely was more the nature of the job or an opportunity to be closer to where they live or um, the wage was not a um, deciding factor as far as we can tell. Anything else for HR guys? Mr. Schleter, anything mm -hmm. concerning to you? Let her be. Yeah, thank you, sir. <clears throat> okay, we've got letter B, insurance broker, employee benefit, consultant services. <clears throat> you wanna yeah, handle so that, Mike? Um, going through renewal and some other things, we felt we could get a little more out of our insurance consultant. So we put out an RFP to six different companies. We reviewed all of those submissions, interviewed four of those, and then we did select one after doing a couple of reference checks. So we're, we're going with Brown and Brown for our new insurance consultant or on the benefit side. Not property and head. Okay. And what was the real deal breaker there? Or I mean, why did we pick Brown and Brown? Yeah. There were a few factors. Um, one thing we've been light on, and the Brown and Brown in particular stuck out in is wellness program for staff. They actually have a full-time person overseeing that and the whole program. But they can we really don't have anything right now. They can help us come in and set up a committee and set up activities and everything. So we can hopefully get a little more focus on staff wellness. Actually, the idea with that is ultimately it reduces medical costs over time. Right. Reduces claims in general, then, huh? And aren't we doing real well on our claims? Because that's why you got a better price for our health insurance. Well, and, and that was the other factor. Yeah. Right? I would, uh, I was still dissatisfied with our renewal, and I, oh, I felt yeah. maybe a little more, a consultant that had more data to go to the carrier with could have gotten us a better renewal. So what we also looked for in particular was somebody who could provide a lot of data analytics. In particular, they could take our data, plug it into their own system and calculate a renewal to go for to the carrier as a starting point instead of just kind of negotiate off of what they were giving us. 
So those are probably our two biggest factors. Um, we're looking at alternate ways to deliver insurance, in particular, either a captive or potentially even self-insuring, and they were very strong in that as well. And in fact, um, one of the um, counties that we checked as a reference, um, they helped them to implement a self-insuring get to that point. So we have a whole analytical tool for that as well. Okay. Uh, I like data. Better make data driven decisions and they can provide us with a lot of that. Good. And you agree, Andy, correct? Absolutely. Is they, this an action item or are we good? You guys just took care of that. Information. information only. Got it. Um, I think the other thing I'd add in is on, on the front of all that is, in, and they all offered employee engagement. That'll be the first things we work on with them is they'll work with us to engage the employees and how we move forward. And I think that's a big part of our need here, too. Right. Great. Thank you, Mr. Markren. Anything else? If not, we'll move on to number 11 then. County Clerk Department Report. Madam Clerk. Sure, this is the first, the second report now from our department. You can see we started to put some of the data in now for the counter activity. Um, there's a lot of interruptions at that counter. Um, and so yeah. Lisa gets a lot of exercise, which is good. Yeah. We're in the throes of election for Feb for April. It's by all indications it's going to be a very late night um we've learned that town of hunter is now going to have a registered write-in on their contact um city of hayward alderman i think it's number one position is a has no candidate so that's all going to be right in so that's going to take a lot of time to how great we're going to be here pretty late on that night so and you got that intense supreme court justice race correct yes and four referendum questions gotcha so it's going to be it is a long ballot but 15 pages of results for us in our office so it's going to take a while are we expecting a large voter turnout mm -hmm. yeah and our second judge will be on the ballot as well mm -hmm. wow and there's only one on the ballot right correct there. And um, the hangar leases are ready for this year. All the letters are prepared in advance. So we just pull them out of the folder and send them out in the month they go out. So therefore, it should be pretty much under under control at this point in time. There's going to be one new lease coming up, and that's that files in Annie's office. Yeah. Okay. Great. That's it. Good work, Madam Clerk. Anything else for? All right. If just not, do we have to put that oh. on the agenda for public works that hangar needs? New one? Um, it's, I have it's it coming ready. up, I think, in July. Yeah, so I, I gave it to him plenty early so that we make sure we, we get it done in time. But yeah. I think it's a July one. Yeah, you can put it in on it. I have it ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have it ready? Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Actually, we just get fed this paperwork, uh, but we're part of the national or the state uh, counties group that's part of the national settlement. So that there's been a you know, settlement reached with the um, retailers. And so what this is is the resolution for the board to adopt, as well as the uh, MOU agreements to other local counties in the state. Um, and it's their, and then the MOU as well uh, regarding this, this current settlement. This settlement is with the retailers. So it's um, Walgreens, Walmart, CVS, um, as well as Teva. I think these were additional manufacturers, Teva to Allergen. Um, but it covers um, all the, this is the, this should be the last of the settlements we see. This covers the remainder of them. Uh, we do not have a dollar amount. Um, but based on the, there's a dollar amount for the national settlement now be divided amongst all the local governments. Um, it depends on how many opt into the settlement, how much we ultimately get. But they have told us to expect you know, our prior settlement was just under 500,000 to expect another settlement of 75, excuse me, 50 to 75 percent of what that settlement was in additional money from this settlement. But we'll um, 
and it would and it also unknown as how many years it's going to be, it'll be paid over a period of years like the first settlement has the first time it was we just don't haven't been told how many years to expect it won't be any longer than the 16 years but it could be shorter in the 10 to 12 year range and by approving this resolution it also approves the mous yes well you're going to want to send all these to the board and right yep you can we approve them with one swoop with you can the resolution approve with one swoop. Okay, and you're prepared for the uh, requirements of the use of this money? It's the same requirements as the original other settlements. So there's I mean, there's a long appendix that mm -hmm. outlines everything that we can use it for. Okay, and that's what Julie Alliance is working on? Correct. Okay, got it. All right, if not, pleasure of the board, I need to entertain a motion to approve this opioid <laughs> settlement <laughs> resolution. Yeah, I move you approve it. Motion by Mr. Duffy. Yes. Motion by Mr. Duffy, second by Mr. Schleter to approve the resolution entering into the opioid settlement with retailers, which includes the Wisconsin local government, local MOU, and the Wisconsin MOU with the retailers Walgreens, Walmart, CVS, Tiba, all those mentioned above. Is that correct, Mr. Albert? Correct. Is there any further discussion? When do you want to use these? If you want to use those? Yeah, let's use our question. If there's no further discussion, we'll set up the voting. And it, voting is open. Voting is open. Motion to approve resolution. And it passes 4 to 0. You. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Albrado. I appreciate it. And this will go on to the full county board. Yeah. All right, number 13, county administrative report. Um, honestly, a lot of it the last couple of weeks has been working with human services on um, preparing for filling the recruiting for the executive director position and also the um, uh, issues in our CPS unit. And a fair amount of activity there, just trying to get working with them, our existing staff, and fill in the blanks. So we have more meetings today. Um, to try to make this as uh, manageable as, as we can. Um, I just don't see a quick turnaround. Um, keep on trying to recruit, but we're probably going to lean on some contracted um, entities to help us with uh, some supervision, some on call after hours uh, supervision ongoing casework there's some providers out there and i would say too like the this is not we're not unique there's one county out there that has no cps workers at all um, there's a couple others that um, are doing the same thing we are as far as having to contract or use other counties to help fill in um, that's why we were able to, we were able to get some of this information on how to do this from um, other counties that have been in the same spot in fact, one county uh, was ending their contracted help, so we were able to jump in and take over those or just contract with the same people that uh, they were using. And so that's just taking a lot of time. Um, no updates on the uh, construction. We've kind of covered that. The timelines are in place to have the turnover be the first week in April. We switched from uh, courtroom, the old courtroom, to the new courtroom. And then a week after that, they'll start remodeling on the, the, the old courtroom. Uh, union negotiations are ongoing. We've put together our response and have um, got it or sent it back to the attorneys for them to the union to consider. Um, anything else? Um, ATV UTV ordinance still in process with the Public Works Committee. Um, had a lot of discussions with the airport as far as the upcoming projects there and some delays in funding that we're trying to tap into some federal funding now to have the memory rehabilitation project stay on schedule for next year um broadband there's a little activity there just because of the most recent round of broadband grant funding so there was a couple of applications locally that uh, we provided support to and then most recently state has a bead grant broadwood equity and and um, broadway broadband equity access um i can't remember what the b stands for but the county is being allocated a small amount of money, amount of money there. And uh, we're working through the region though with I think seven or eight other counties. Um, 
that are all going to go on and rather than using it you can have to get the choice of bringing in local or going with the region if you went with the region there's a little more money and just based on the scope of work we decided it would make more sense to do it on a regional basis so we will we'll be working with visions northwest which is part of the planning commission to um to carry out those activities um, and then I think that's about it i know that the Andy, that the 161 agreement is ready to go to the full county board. Could you yep. cover that at the board? I'll, I'll, the last day I checked into it, it's already been through our attorney, and that the uh, I'll double check this that we just can our senior human services can sign off. Okay, but I just I got that yesterday from the legal. Okay, person. thank you. Okay, anything else for Mr. Albrado and the county administrator's report? He does a wonderful job. That's great. All right. If not, uh, future agenda items. Anyone, anything? Maybe we should address that female jailer's mess. I like that. I don't know what to do with that thing. But I think we just can't sit down. Is that, well, is that, we have the finance chair here. Is that something that finance should look at? Are we? Well, it's got to come from public safety first, I would say. I mean, they but it's if if it's impacting the county budget, then yeah. I think I would like finance to look at it, and well, it could be here too, Mr. Duffy. I guess that's a good point. And you know, you hate to interfere with the judge, but uh, do we have that many badass women, and we have to have that many in jail? I mean, can we can we use some of them on bracelets or something? Uh, on other, other you have other one, you have one on jail. a bracelet now. Pardon? There's one on a bracelet, um, one inmate. Uh, the other ones, I, I don't even want names, but are, no, are I know. that bad that that's where they have to be? Uh, or is there other ways we can we can be Well, that's a, that's a very good question. Yeah, through, I mean, at, at Public Safety and CJCC, within the last, I don't know how many months ago, we had the sheriff and Justice Point and, and the judge talk about electronic monitoring. Yeah. Because separate from females, just all together, like Mr. Schumann said, we have generally about one person on monitoring um part of that I mean, they explain the process part of it is how the judge sentences them um if they're allowed to have um privileges like a monitoring place that and then the chair has some control over it as to who he determines can have the privilege of a monitoring bracelet and then justice point is the one that actually um administers the program they don't make the decision they just you know, put the um, install the bracelet and track the track, track the person who's on it. But when you go through all that conversation, there's just not that many people that they're a, right. able to put on electronic monitoring. And then my question, Mr. Duffy, at CJCC was, is this, I didn't get a chance to ask it because we'd asked so many questions about it. Yeah. Is this a revenue generator for the county and the jail? It, it, that I can add, that they, the, the person on the bracelet pays the cost plus a little bit for the bracelet so, it's so not it does a, bring in revenue and yeah not much some... revenue but it's not a, it doesn't cost us anything okay so these seven or 18 women are they there for drugs what, what are they there for that i mean, I mean really uh, murder or, i can see where they somebody threatens the safety of our citizens but if they're in there just for an annoyance there, there's got to be other ways to, to keep secure um the community without locking them up and being that big, I don't, and I don't know how we're gonna how we're gonna change that. I don't know that yeah. six months from now we're gonna be any better. Well, I I brought up at Health and Human Services that um, you know we just put eight million dollars out there on the taxpayers to build a second courtroom in exchange for maybe we're gonna save some money down the road as far as jail population, whatever these costs are, right? Yeah. And are we gonna realize that? Or our taxpayer is going to come back to us in a month or a year and say, hey, we're paying all these taxes. What do we get for this money? Mm -hmm. Now we have a second courtroom, a second judge. Are we still filling the jail? Are we still housing them outside the county? These are all good questions. I don't know that a second judge or a second courtroom is going to do anything to reduce the women population in, in Barron County. Uh, maybe they are. I don't know. But I think it's a question that we have to ask. And what what can we do? Well, let's put that on female administration jailers, agenda. It's next time. I have it as female jailer update, but 
Do you need something different? Oh, well, an update, we know the update will be the same as last month and the month before, you know, nothing's happened. No one, no one applies. How would you like it titled? I mean, I guess it'd be nice to go to other counties and say, what, are you guys all doing this problem? I mean, do you all have the same problem? Or are they paying them more money? If they do, how do they do that? How do they pay the women more than the men? Cheers. That's another problem. I don't think you can do that. I don't think so either. Mr. Kinsley. In finance, maybe you could get some numbers together somehow, some way of what it's costing us to transport them out there. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I would like that. And, co and compare that to if they were in house. Yeah. And Mike, how are we going to track the savings of building the second courtroom and having a second judge so that we can share it with the public? Just tweet the job is on the line. All right. <laughs> we're all up for real action. I'll have to give that one some power down. I also have some idea what the cost is to keep it down there, not just the daily cost, but transportation cost. Right. Whatever. Yeah, I, mean, I, I see. Well, I guess Mike and I can knock heads and figure out how to track it. But I mean, if that was the 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 cell going into this, then I mean, you might save money on. Moving people through their through the system quicker. That was for me. Yeah, you look at our in our incarceration numbers right now are down. They're in the seventies, but still half the people incarcerated are pre sentence. And right now we only we have less than twenty people, less than fifteen that are actually due in time in, in jail. They're already sentenced and they're serving out their term. The rest are either probation holds or pre sentence. Yeah, Mr. Kinsley. Yeah. But your your cost to operate the second courtroom, I'm assuming are going to be comparable or more than what the you're savings see, you'll see yeah. in the jail. That's that's so obvious. Yeah. And that was what the numbers put together. When we build that, it's not going to cost us anything else in utilities or maintenance. Well, who the kid when that was said? Right. And we were all convinced that this was going to, this is the thing we have to do. So now we did it. So now what? Well, it'd be nice to get some analyst figures. How many in there are for probation holes? How many are in there for pre sentence? We have those numbers. Okay, so yeah. what, what are those? Um, I can pull them up, but I just looked at them yesterday at the meeting. Could you email that jail report? To, yeah, it's, it's the jail, all in there. Every month in the jail report shows how many are probation holes, how many are pre sentence, how many are sentenced, post sentence. I got to go with Mr. Schleter, though, guys. He's been waiting. I don't remember. Anybody telling the general public that, oh, this is going to save you tax dollars during this whole process. It was going to move through, through a little quicker, and those savings are small. But operating the second quarter, I don't think anybody believed that was going to save money. It's going to cost money. The reason we built this courtroom was to get a second judge because the state judge told us we had to. That, that was the impetus. Well, at some point we had to approve eight million dollars and build a second courtroom. Yeah. Otherwise, the second judge wasn't going to come. Yeah, I remember what the vote was. Yeah. <laughs> that was a tough push. What was it? To approve it. Well, yeah, nobody wanted it. You know, we didn't want to do it. It was, it was but we were told to do it. We had no choice. Oh, we had a choice. But we were also told by Mr. Channing that we would get no help if we turned it down, like uh, bringing other judges in. Mr. Channing said that they would not be bringing other judges to help us to get through the heavy workload that. Our current judge so claims he has. That was really that was no option at all. That was black And yet the state, the state pays for the judge wages, and they help with nothing else. Mm -hmm. And when we had, like Jimmy Boy who uh, highly recommended that he sat here with the judge one time and said, yeah, you need a second judge. I asked him how much money's coming with it when you appoint that. 
And he answered me, none. So if any citizen walks up to me and says, you told us this was going to save, save money, I would say, no, we did not tell you that. Yeah. We told you this is going to cost you money. It supposed to be the workload of the judges was so heavy that that's why we needed a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know I have people in my district that are looking at us and watching this and make sure that their taxpayers' money is well spent and not wasted. So that's why I ask all these questions. All right. Anything else for future agenda items? I think you have that right, Madam Clerk. We're going to continue that and finance will also bring us something. Yes. Okay. Correspondence reports. Do you want to talk about the litigation? Litigation. <laughs> legislative update. Yeah. So we, we were at the legislative, uh, the county association legislative conference last week. Um, a lot of discussion on the state budget and where that's headed. And I think I mentioned at the last finance meeting that you, know, you kind of hear two different stories. The governor introduced his budget and explained what he was doing and how he planned to use some of the surplus. And I used, I use, I don't know, you can debate whether it's a surplus or not amongst yourselves. But that's what he called it and moving more of that into the budget and then providing some relief to local governments, like counties by providing additional shared revenue back to us. And I would just point out that when we talk about shared revenue, it's a big deal to a lot of places. It's not a big deal to us because what, $25,000, $50,000 a year actual shared revenue? Well, I think it's around two hundred, dollars but... Well, that, including utility aids and everything else, but we, we're not out. It's of, not much. It's not much because we have high property values here that the formula, we get one of the lower amounts of shared revenue. There's other places that are millions of dollars. Other counties get millions of dollars in shared revenue. So depending on how they calculate the formula to provide additional shared revenue um, will be a big factor for us. Um, some, you know, his proposal is you know, what we're already getting, they're not doing anything with. They will put money on top of that based on a different formula. So we'll see where that goes. The other thing his include his budget includes is a provision to allow counties to uh, add an additional half percent sales tax through referendum for um, local government operations. That will be more of an interesting discussion here because our sales tax, one, that's a significant amount of money, but two is you know, generally you would say that most of our sales tax or a good chunk of it is paid by out of county users that come into the county and drive on the roads and use some of our services. So, but so that's his proposal. Now we'll see the legislature yesterday announced their budget hearings um, as they start to move to create their own budget. And then we'll see how close they are, you know, to the governor and the legislature or um, start working together, hopefully, to come up with a budget that's adopted by the end of June. Um, so, um, well, say that uh, the counties association, in addition just to shared revenue and transportation aids, is also pushing for additional funding for the victim witness coordinators. Um, and there's uh, transportation aids. Oh, and mental health. Mental health is the other big topic um, that would benefit the counties if they, they put additional funding into. Um, you know, some of it, a lot of it's, I think, actually geared towards youth and schools, but some of their uh, discussions are about additional funding for programs that the counties administer. Yeah, and we also heard from the Supreme Court candidates and um, other other legislative staff. So it's, I always enjoy that session if you're into the, the inner, works in, inner workings of uh, government and politics. It's interesting. It's also quite a bit frustrating, too. So Actually, sometimes you think you hear the same ideas. I think they were both had both legislature and the governor were headed down the road of shared revenue relief to counties, but now it's like somebody got to say something first. So just a lot of unnecessary barriers. Yeah, and I was there as well, as well as Dale, and I really enjoyed it. Was there any I didn't catch though, was there any talk in the budget of Increasing the levy limits like he had asked two years ago because that got turned down by the legislature, right. correct? Yep. Yeah, the only talk is of allowing additional revenue through referendum through sales. Do tax. this. 
half percent sales yeah, tax. And that's that's really the, the nuts and bolts of the conversation. This has been at the counties association is to get counties off of being tied to the levy or property tax levy. There's, there's no desire for the legislature or the public to see more in property taxes. So they want to tie more of local government, county revenue to the sales tax. So that's why the governor's proposal to provide more shared revenue is about allocating 20% or one penny of the 5% state sales tax back to local governments. It's all based on the sales tax not any adjustments to property tax. Gotcha. Because there are a lot of counties using the strategies we do to get out from under the levy limits by the short-term borrowing, right, Mike, that we do to, for capital improvements and that? Do yeah, other counties use that? or Lots of counties are using that. And I think that's why it's becoming more of a, not an issue, but I think the legislature is seeing that and the governor is that you know, we've been under the levy caps for more than, a, I don't know, how long right. been. And so they're seeing more of the games. And so I think that's why they realize yeah. that they, not, they but, need to do something at the state level to get more money down to the level. But the games still increase taxes. Yes. Yep. Right? You yep. push it out from under there, but we still put it on the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. Right? Everything they don't see that? They are understanding that too. And that's, what, that's why I think that's this discussion that's kind of come from the counties and the Sit, uh, county cities local governments about getting away from the because there's no they know there's no desire at the legislative level to see any adjustments to more property taxes so that's why there's this push to get us off of the property tax or more into the sales tax because that is more of a number that moves there's been a consistent increase in sales tax so um, local government should be able to be tied to something that there's always an increase in does net new construction play any role in shared revenue? Um, not directly, indirectly, shared revenue is based on your property value, your values of your property. So as, as property values increase, and it's not just us, like the school districts in Sawyer County don't get hardly any state support either because of the high property values relative to other places. You wanna to add to that, Mike, or are you good? Well, I mean, coming from the school and seeing both sides, you know, I, I know that when the school formula was put into place, the idea was that no matter where you lived in the state, your mill rate would be the same. But, you know, with different spending per pupil and everything, that doesn't happen. But that's kind of the emphasis for all the made up with one month. So, you know, while we don't see the school that doesn't, we don't get a lot of shared revenue. Those property taxes are still lower than if you're living in, you know, like in the Smith, for instance, or their mill rate is probably twice what Hayward School District is. Yeah, I mean, our county mill rate, the same thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's really low. Like, if you just looked at the rate, it's half of what some of the other counties in the area are. That ties back then to the value of the property that was higher there. Yeah. Okay, anything you want to add anything, Mr. Schleter? Did we cover most of that? Yeah, it's covered very well. Um, maybe we should approach the Wisconsin Counties Association and tell them next year don't. No, that wouldn't work either. As we say, until they get a, a budget assigned or created. Signed, sealed, and delivered by the legislature and the governor, and then we go down and talk about it. It was just, it was all conjecture. Well, if we do this, or if we do that, we might do it this way. Yeah, and they actually moved this. This used the legislative conference was a month later than it has been before, in part so that it was after the the budget was introduced. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's a good strategy or bad, but that's one of the reasons it was in March rather than the first week of February. Got it. And the governor still has veto power with what the legislature might present. So there's still a part. I mean, mm -hmm. they still have to agree on something, come to they some type of agreement. Terms at some point for us to have the state budget. Got it. 
And that's where the some of the years, some years the governor introduces a budget and the legislature takes it and kind of adjusts it. And or, and then most recently though, governor introduces his budget and then the legislature introduces their own budget. Then they have to the governor since the governor still has to sign off on it, there needs to be some some uh, yeah, some collaboration to get to a point where they can adopt it. Right. Okay. Anything else for correspondence? No, nope, just stick around the sign. Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good job. Thank you, Rob.